next uh, on our website so more people can reach it afterwards. Uh, but I'm glad you could join us this evening. I have noticed your names in many publications uh, concerning uh, the statistic evidence join us. Um, tell us more about this evidence. Uh, and I think we have quite a few people here, so uh, we can perhaps have questions in the chat and pick them up afterwards. Um, but I think you can just start now. I'm very glad you can join us. You are at the university in Italy. It's a new culture for us um, in the Italian one, but I'm very glad to that you could join us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And a good evening, or good morning, or good night, <laughs> according to your time <laughs> zone. Yes. Okay. Um, what I would like to discuss with you is the uh, scientific of uh, no local perception or extrasensory is uh, that, uh, that is much more familiar. But uh, in the last day, last years, the perception local. I will explain why I prefer this term. First, uh, it's important to find uh, what I mean, and uh, others, colleagues, means uh, as a no local perception. And uh, it's quite simple, is the capacity to receive uh, uh, information outside the range of, of our sensory organs without space and time boundaries. That means that we can perceive distant kilometers in <laughs> from uh, your uh, actual position and information that are in the past or in the future. It's a quite an intriguing <laughs> phenomena. Uh, and it's possible this uh, consciousness in the sense that we can verbally uh, writing uh, uh, reports what we are perceiving or unconsciously. And uh, we explain how uh, I and others uh, this, this capacity, the capacity to uh, detect unconsciously information in uh, this strange way. <laughs> okay, uh, these are some examples that uh, most of you are, are very probably familiar with. Uh, perceive images or objects located in the ways, uh, the Parapsychological uh, glossary uh, find his capacities by clairvoyance or remote viewing, uh, perceive images, objects uh, that uh, will be available in the future. They are not present when you uh, try to perceive them. Uh, and it's called familiar, familiar, familiarity with recognition. Even remote viewing is applied. Uh, for perceiving objects that will <laughs> appear in the future, our uh, human uh, dimension. Oh, other ways to perceive is uh, to sense physically, and it is uh, uh, one of the means, uh, uh, unconscious, unconscious means we can use for detecting uh, in uh, non-local perception, non-local information. For example, uh, detecting the uh, modification of the heart rate, uh, the electroencephalographic activity, uh, pupil dilation, etc. And a popular term is presentiment, in the sense that you feel something, but you cannot describe it consciously, verbally, or in written term. Or, uh, for example, another uh, classical phenomena is to share images or scenes with another person that is a, a sensorily shielded at distance. It's a classical uh, telepathic uh, condition. Okay, very, very probably you are <laughs> very, uh, very familiar with this phenomena. Okay? Yes. Uh, it's because, because this kind of perception uh, that is not constrained 
by the uh, limitation of our sensory organs, visual, auditory, tactile. I prefer with others uh, the use of the null because it is nowhere, <laughs> everywhere. Okay, uh, as you probably know, these kind of phenomena uh, are not well known, <laughs> in particular for uh, in the academic uh, uh, circles <laughs> of the university, and the possible responses whether you uh, talk or discuss uh, uh, about such uh, phenomena is uh, it's impossible <laughs> because it creates the low physics and the brain capacity. Okay. And any scientific risk can only be the result of fraud, but practice of errors. This is the classical <laughs> position of the obtuse skeptics <laughs> that you uh, hear, heard many times. Uh, less uh, uh, obtuse <laughs> um, is uh, it is impossible because it violates uh, the law of physics. Uh, but it's up to you to show me the scientific evidence. In this case, uh, it's up to us <laughs> to uh, show if uh, there are scientific evidence and their uh, quality, their uh, robustness, and so on. Okay? Yes. And let's uh, suppose to discuss with <laughs> an open minded skeptic, <laughs> because as you know, of the skeptics, uh, uh, for them, there are no uh, arguments to uh, discuss. Okay? They already know the truth. So if they uh, all, uh, uh, know it's possible to uh, discuss it, if there is another truth <laughs> available. Okay, uh, one of the criticisms that you are probably uh, often uh, hear about is that there are, uh, there are no or very uh, few scientific evidence, but uh, the response, uh, uh, that we can give them in 2021 is that from 1905 is the, when the, the scientific uh, approach to this uh, phenomena start uh, with uh, Ryan in USA, G.B. Ryan. Yes. I don't know if it's John, uh, I, don't know, I don't know the name. Okay. Up to 2020, uh, 20, there are 928 experiments selected and analyzed, analyzed by 11 different meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a, a, a statistical tool uh, for summarizing quantitatively um, the evidence, the scientific evidence, and relate to a specific aspect of the non-local perception. And it is important to suggest to the open mind skeptics if that all these stuff, these materials, these papers are available simply Googling with Google Scholar. You can <laughs> use Google Scholar, it is an open <laughs> instrument offered by Google, and you insert the keywords uh, telepathy, uh, clairvoyance, uh, etc. You can retrieve all. <laughs> uh, it is a great, great innovation because you can. Imagine before uh, internet, it was difficult to assess uh, all this stuff, all this material. Uh, another objection that uh, is often heard by skeptics is that uh, many experiments fail to find evidence of such perception. Okay, the yes. response is <laughs> it's normal. In the scientific affair, the scientific uh, job uh, is uh, a common finding uh, to see some experiments uh, 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 don't find the evidence for uh, behavioral, emotional, uh, uh, social phenomena, but it's uh, uh, the game of the science that sometimes is possible to find something, sometimes uh, it is not possible, but what is very important is to summarize, to summarize uh, all the evidence to see if the 
cumulative evidence is sufficient for writing that something is real and uh, demonstrating the uh, characteristics of the phenomenon under uh, scrutiny. Uh, here, <laughs> you can read the, the response to the uh, objection that uh, uh, there are experiments uh, that fi uh, fi find evidence of uh, such type of hope. And I assure you, even um, within the um, community, the small community, you know, that investigate such type of perception, there are uh, there are not uh, some mechanisms that are not well been uh, well, uh, well known in order to uh, extract extract the the the, 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 the perception. Are you that uh, can anticipate that? Uh, uh, the states of consciousness is a critical variable in order to uh, find evidence of no longer perception. And uh, as a state of consciousness um, is important uh, a, to take in consideration that uh, the normal typical state of consciousness, the state of consciousness we are seeing now, I, I, I expect all of us are in this so-called typical state of consciousness, but uh, there are other. For example, a common uh, state of consciousness um, employed in the, this kind of investigation is a different that uh, most of you probably well know, but it is a sort of sensory isolation, visual and tactile, no, visually and auditory isolation by using uh, filters. But another state of consciousness that is behind this kind of investigation is hypnosis, dream, and other, are, uh, other states that looks like meditation that require a very high control of the metal con. For, for example, in the remote viewing uh, uh, condition, this is a typical special state of consciousness that participant must uh, uh, must master because as a, if you have some experience with meditation, you know that it's now very simple to uh, control all your mental uh, events, uh, mental contents. And uh, apart the states of consciousness, that is important variable, I can anticipate it is a critical uh, 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 condition for uh, obtain a, a good level of uh, no perception. Another critical variable is the type of response that is uh, investigated by using forced choice in the sense, for example, uh, here you can see an example, uh, you can imagine to be uh, in front of a screen, of a computer screen, and uh, you must decide where you will find a smile and you have uh, an option, a double option, and you are forced to ch choose the left or the right. This, uh, typical uh, lab experiment uh, for testing if you can uh, detect the information behind a, a door uh, that will be uh, presented randomly so there, is, there are, is no rule that you can try to uh, uh, or, or or search for uh, deciding which is the, the the exact door to open. Okay. Yes. The another uh, typical types of response that I anticipate uh, a minute a minutes ago is the, the unconscious anticipatory physiological signal in the sense that the uh, monitor the uh, uh, physiological signals. For example, heart rate. Uh, AG activity, electroencephalographic activity, 
pupil dilation, uh, uh, skin response, and so on. And in this case, uh, the participant must simply be alert, not, not moving too much uh, their body in order not to interfere with the uh, physiological signals. And the signals are detected before the presentation of future images. And uh, in a typical experiment, these signals um, contain the, character the characteristics according to the future signal. For example, if the future signal is a positive e image or a negative image, uh, you can detect a different activation of earth rate, for example, or the AG activity. The other typical uh, response type is the free response in the sense that uh, you are asked to describe verbally or visually by using uh, uh, sketches, uh, visual sketches, uh, uh, what images or what uh, landscape <laughs> you will see uh, after or is required by the uh, investigator. Okay? Yes. So it's important in consideration that the states of consciousness and the types of reference are two critical and underlying fundamental aspect for uh, using, uh, detecting, or having a good non-local percept. And now I show you the results that I hope will come to you. This is uh, um, the last uh, summary of uh, the 1938 experiments uh, from 1935 to 2020. We published this year. Here's the title of the paper. If you want to retrieve, uh, is open access, so you can read all the details. But from this picture, you can see a big, huge difference between, uh, for example, uh, remote viewing. Uh, so, sorry, the local perception, perception using remote viewing and other non-ordinary states of consciousness with free response, okay? You can see the this level. If yeah. you compare this level with the uh, uh, experiment carried out in a normal state, normal typical state of consciousness required requiring uh, uh, forced choice, the example, the two doors uh, uh, under which you can find a small or something else, you can see the huge difference is uh, unbelievable. So the, the <laughs> if you read the, the, the legend here, you saw that the you the, the less um, say the less. Uh, the minor results are obtained when you are in normal states of consciousness. That's the, the, the true story. If you uh, bypass the normal state of consciousness and use either free rest or unconsciously uh, measure, physiological measure, you can obtain the best result. And you, you see the <laughs> huge difference. So, the, the, the synthesis is if you apply this kind of uh, uh, situation in, in the lab or in, in other condition, it's very easy to uh, find nothing. <laughs> and this is because of, uh, many experiments uh, are not support. Uh, do not support the uh, local uh, non local per se. It is important to take into account the states of consciousness and the type of response required to the participants. This is the core of my message, and other details are in the paper if you want to read them. And the aspect, very, very important, is the uh, expertise of participants, in particular, if you ask them to report uh, uh, using the free response uh, protocols. And uh, here, 
it's a, a summary of all uh, experiments done in the Gansfeld situation. Okay, the Gansfeld is a situation where you are uh, isolated visually and auditorily, and uh, okay, a very particular situation. But is the performance of non-expert, for example, students or people without any ex experience with uh, such a kind of uh, of time with expert participants that uh, have a minimum of training uh, or by using meditation techniques or because they have uh, already done uh, such a kind of experiments. It's three times uh, higher than, uh, than the known participant. This is another critical variable. If you, uh, I repeat, uh, use uh, protocol that require free response. Free response is a very uh, taxing uh, task. It requires, must require an expertise or a training. And here is the, the data that confirm that, uh, okay, is it possible, this is not excluded, if you uh, recruit uh, a non-expert participant, you can obtain some, some results. It's very probable you, uh, find nothing, <laughs> the advice is to use expert or to train participants before uh, asking them uh, such a kind of uh, uh, task. Okay, I already have a take on messages, so we are already for question and clarification. My, <coughs> one of the my uh, strong <laughs> statement is the non-local extra sensory perception is supported by good scientific evidence. And uh, it's, it is a, a message in particular for those who are interested in such a kind of investigation. You can uh, got much better results if you bypass the ordinary states of consciousness, either detecting unconscious physiological events at rate, uh, skin, conductance, etc., or using conscious introspection, but <laughs> that requires a good practice. That's it. Okay, this is the global uh, take on a uh, message in the uh, the reflection about the, all this stuff, all this evidence is if the uh, non local possession real, the implication about the nature of our mind and consciousness, because you can imagine that this uh, consequence of this, uh, uh, of the reality of this phenomenon, we are pushed to reflect about. Uh, the nature of our mind and consciousness. And uh, as you know well, uh, in the academia, the main, uh, uh, say, um, I would say, I would be a truth or axiom is that uh, our mind uh, is nothing else that uh, the, a byproduct of our brain, but all that uh, we can. Uh, uh, assume that this, this is true and that uh, uh, our brain is simply a receiver. It's important because, but uh, the reality of our mind consciousness is local. And uh, if it is non local, this might suggest that, that it's also, um, no, it never is not linked to the. Um, our uh, bio biology, our brain. And so if our brain is, is uh, functional and we did, probably <laughs> it is, uh, something survive. It is open other, say, great, uh, uh, say, uh, curiosity about the survival of our mind, consciousness, and identity. And if you want to, uh, something more about the survival uh, proof, the proof about the survival. You can read uh, all the stuff published by, in the Bigelow uh, uh, Institute. Uh, as you know, probably 
uh, there is there has been a contest, international contest, uh, uh, supported by the um, consciousness, uh, uh, sort of consciousness uh, center. I don't know. So, uh, yes. founded by, by B. And, and just uh, two days ago, they published all the winners of the contest, and you know that the, the first winner um, won five. Five hundred thousand dollars. That is a respectable yes. <laughs> of money. And uh, in the uh, in this uh, on the site, you can read all the uh, winning the twenty nine winning essays. So you can read the uh, interesting uh, stuff about the so if our consciousness survive our physical death. This is another important. Uh, Topic probably will require another, uh, say, appointment. <laughs> okay, is uh, all that I would like to share with you. And um, there are some uh, papers we authored and uh, that are related to uh, to, <laughs> to my comments, to uh, the comments I briefly explained this evening. Thank you. And I, there, are, there are questions, clarifications. I'm here. OK, thank you very much for your presentation. It was quite interesting. I recognized most of it. Um, I noticed that uh, physiological responses and state of consciousness are important. Um, for example, trained participants is very good. Um, I am a little curious about both if there is any connection to the survival topic and also the non-local. Do you see any connection with quantum physics where non-local, the term non-local is uh, has a connection to quantum physics? Uh, it, it, as you well know, uh, probably the but this, the attendees also know that there is a, a from a theoretical point of view, it's a very interesting to see if some strange uh, fringe phenomena uh, that are well and observed in quantum physics looks like uh, some strange phenomena <laughs> of the type of uh, just described that are mentally phenomena. It is important to uh, not to this, ignore the difference. We are uh, to, uh, this evening we discuss about mental phenomena and physics deal with physical. But what is physical? What is the difference between the the phys what we call a physical uh, opposite of phenomena and mental phenomena? Are they really different or are they different aspects of uh, a, uh, inner stuff or identical stuff. This is very so. Uh, there are many, many uh, uh, theories that try to put together or compare uh, if the, for example, the uh, connection between two minds, uh, the typical telepathic uh, situation, it looks like uh, a, a typical one phenomena that is called entanglement, when two uh, physical objects seem uh, connected, even if they are uh, uh, light years apart, <laughs> not only yes. kilometers, but light year apart, and they seem connected, if there is something, it seems there are things that connect them <laughs> from a visitor yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a phenomena is, 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 is okay, it's less precise, of course, but um, uh, possible with two minds, two human minds, the telepathic experiments, if, <laughs> usually they are done with people separated by, it, uh, by meters or some kilometers, but not <laughs> kilometers uh, for practical reasons essentially, but uh, they look very similar. Uh, this is uh, 
curious to see, to investigate if what we call mind uh, might be, or not what we call uh, matter is simply uh, something mental with another <laughs> composition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we come we come to the very big question: what is matter and what what is mind? Quite a difficult question, both related. No, but in the recent years, years, there are uh, theoreticians uh, and experimentalists that uh, uh, describe uh, or discuss. Uh, for example, uh, there are in the recent year, um, its name is. Uh, Kastrup is supporting an idealist uh, uh, um, conception of the, the matter. Yeah. This, uh, that the idealist uh, position is that is mental, even yes. what we call physical, but yeah. is nothing but a perception, and perception is mental, <laughs> is that. Yeah. Or other. Uh, uh, theoreticians like um, uh, let me Atmas Parker, uh, Wallach, yes. that uh, supported the dual aspect monism. Dual yeah. aspect is a position that speculate that state that what we call matter, what we call mind, are simply two aspects of. An identical or uh, unique stuff, and the other that uh, uh, position that uh, uh, support the possibility that uh, non local pensation uh, not violate the law of physics because sometimes people uh, said that. Uh, refer to the law of physics of, uh, of Newton, Newtonian here, here when uh, there are separate objects that can interact with different localization space and time. And as you know, the uh, theoristic physics, and in particular, the quantum physics changed dramatically uh, the uh, idea about uh, the, uh, the or, or the physical world, and uh, as you know, for example, in, in quantum physics, the problem of the observer, if the observer, who the person who uh, 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 retrieves the information by his uh, uh, instruments, is a, a necessary condition or is a passive. Uh, con uh, component of the reality and uh, this is a, a big problem even for physicists sometimes they uh, don't care about it because if uh, they are more in the application uh, because quantum physics uh, even if it, from theoretical point of view is has many many interpretation uh, in contradictions <laughs> among the different theoreticians but uh, from a, a practical point of view, uh, is now at a uh, is now uh, at the level of uh, uh, say practical uh, application in, a, in telecommunication, uh, in, uh, in quantum imaging, uh, other uh, many other uh, technical applications, and sometimes often many physics don't care about. <laughs> The interpretation, if the, the the role of the human is essential, but uh, they are quite uh, uh, satisfied if the <laughs> their um, uh, technical apparatus works <laughs> without uh, say uh, moving to a theore theoretical level. But in our case, in case is important because, uh, as I said, uh, one of the Typical uh, objection by the skeptics is that non local perception is not possible because it violates the laws of physics and the, the laws of the biological uh, constraints of our brain and our sensory organs. But if we move to another level, we reject a, a classical physics and uh, 
in classical biology possible to say, have some support <laughs> by other disciplines. Even I, I recommend always to have clear that uh, we are discussing, in the case of non-local persons, we are discussing about mental activity, mental, uh, say, stuff, and not physical. Unless we <laughs> the differences between what is physical, what do, what do we call physical and what do we call mental. Okay. If yeah. we find they are uh, similar or are either from the, a, a similar uh, say, uh, source, uh, okay, we have the, the theoretical problem. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, yeah. Uh, if we had Bernardo Castro for a lecture two or three weeks ago, so I have it rather fresh in mind, all ideas you had. Uh, quite uh, big questions he raises. <laughs> yes, uh, from, from the point of view, the, the, the big issue is to um, demonstrate the uh, fallacy uh, of the uh, physicalist, uh, materialist approach of all this stuff and yeah. we, we should we can open other door related to the uh, so-called ordinary mental experiences like uh, near death experience out of body experiences uh, after that communication experiences that are not compatible with the uh, a reductionist uh, materialist point of view okay yeah and, sum up all these uh, phenomena, it's inevitable that we uh, uh, that the, the, the material physicalist uh, uh, interpretation of the uh, men, mental brain, mental the relationship uh, is untenable and we need another uh, interpretation in a theoretical uh, say approach. This is the critical point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did you notice that the person you hoped to be with us is now with us? Uh, Professor Adrian Parker. Uh, you... The name, sorry? Uh, Adrian Parker. Ah, okay. He's one of our guests now. Okay, yeah. I, I let him other experts in uh, uh, the, to discuss this. I am. I, I read a much of the literature, but I confess I'm not a quantum physicist. And uh, sometimes I discuss with them, but uh, I'm a refrain for <laughs> uh, tackling uh, uh, quantum physics uh, uh, stuff, uh, because. Uh, I prefer to, I'm more confident with the mental. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, do we have any questions from anybody else? John or Adrian? Or someone else? There are many possible topics we touch upon. Uh, For example, in this uh, paper, why consciousness is primary, uh, it's a recent paper, it's a preprint uh, version, but uh, uh, we try to offer to the reader uh, different uh, proof that uh, the, the consciousness is primary, is, is beyond, <laughs> beyond the body. Yeah, yeah. For example, but, we, we discuss uh, the, the uh, phenomena that are uh, study, studying mainstream uh, um, science, for example, placebo, nocebo, hypnosis, uh, um, uh, meditation, for example, and many other uh, phenomena that added to the <laughs> non local. Uh, perception uh, in the non-ordinary mental experience converge yeah. to part the fact that the consciousness cannot be or is difficult to be, to be a byproduct uh, of the brain with all its uh, limits. <clears throat>
Yeah, yes, it's quite interesting that even quite other questions concerning the consciousness indicates that the brain doesn't create consciousness. Like you say, placebo and nocebo and other things also have this question. Um, I mean, you don't have to believe in paranormal phenomena, but even placebo is, for many people, quite enough <laughs> to question this. But, but it's curious that uh, in, the, uh, in the scientific literature, there is a lot of material related to placebo and nocebo, but um, most of the investigators refrain from um, uh, discussing the mind, brain, mind, body. They describe all the mechanisms. Uh, they uh, are convinced that the, the social interests, uh, the placebo, and, and not only the inert substance is crucial for uh, uh, enabling the a placebo response. They, <laughs> they don't discuss the, how is it possible that uh, a mental expectation, a mental uh, say hope, uh, is sufficient for modifying the biology related to the to pain for example to depression or to other uh, say Ill, illness it is uh, <laughs> in, in academia you know people uh, don't want to compromise the uh, academic status so they can okay, describe the phenomena without entering in uh, theoretical implications <laughs> But uh, the evidence, uh, cumulative evidence, and converging evidence from different phenomena, in my view, of course, but, but yeah. support strongly that uh, consciousness cannot be a byproduct of the brain. It's not, uh, uh, say, um, uh, it's not depends on the brain when the brain ceases is uh, functioning. That's even more interesting because discussing if we can survive our physical uh, is another existential uh, say uh, problem but worth to be investigated even scientifically yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so that's what, quite a new paper in mind yes yes okay Okay, uh, I'm at my disposal. Here you can write to me if you are you need the paper clarification, and I wish you all the best for SPR. <laughs> that, okay. Uh, yes. Is, is doing a very very important uh, activity for disseminating, for example, a, a great initiative of C Encyclopedia is uh, one of the best examples for disseminating the modern era uh, from that often where uh, it's not detectable, <laughs> not retrievable. Uh, it's a great, great resource for all curious people. Yeah, I can obviously, tell. Obviously, it's necessary to a little bit open mind skeptic, a little bit, at least. <laughs> yeah. I can say if anybody's interested in these slides we have seen, I have, I have got them, so you can email me and I can send them to you if you want the, the slides from this presentation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Karen. See you. And uh, we remain in touch uh, directly we'll... or indirectly because we are part of the Universal local non consciousness. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Sometime. Okay. See you. Bye See you. bye. Bye bye.